what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be giving you my guide to richard the first in rise of kingdoms Now, Richard the first is an incredibly iconic commander in this game not only because he's the first wheel of fortune commander that you can get your hands on but he's also a really powerful commander for a very long time even into season four this commander does his role super super well and that is being a tanky commander that can heal your troops now really quick before i jump into the guide i wanted to share with you guys a really awesome piece of artwork that i paid a friend of mine to make for me over on instagram his instagram is called turtle shell pins i'm gonna have all of his links in the description below but he actually made this image for me uh, i gave him a little bit of guidance on what i wanted and he absolutely just blew it out of the park um he drew all this by hand obviously it's heavily inspired by richard the first um except it's it's omni arc the first i guess you could say and i really wanted him to make this for me because um he's super talented really great guy but also um i wanted to use a piece of this artwork for maybe some merch and different logos and things like that so if you guys have any merch ideas or anything like that comment them down below but of course um definitely check out his instagram he has two separate instagrams and i'm going to show you uh this image as well this is a pin that i actually purchased from his shop you can see it on my bag right here um this is called the golden warrior he has a lot of different anime inspired pins and different apparel on his other store so there's a ton of reasons to go and check him out and it would actually really mean a ton to me if you guys would go and drop him a follow because like i said i thought this piece of artwork was super super good i really love it i can't wait to use it for a bunch of different stuff and i wanted to share it with you guys with that being said let's jump right into the guide richard the first the lionheart is a infantry garrison defense commander now we've seen this before even in the early game we also have charles martel who has the exact same talent builds but there is a difference both of these commanders are very tanky but richard the first does something completely different from charles martel so if you're thinking that they're kind of the same they're definitely not and they do actually work insanely well together the way that you get richard and i mentioned this before the only way to initially get him is through the wheel of fortune he shows up on the wheel of fortune he's the first three wheels that you see in your kingdom i highly recommend summoning richard during this time even if you're not sure if you're going to use him at least summon him because again he's one of the best legendary commander investments you can make in this game he's right up there with isong a and alexander um, i made a video comparing richard the first and isong a and which one you should invest in first so if that's your question watching this video i recommend going and checking that one out but if you spin the wheel 10 times you're guaranteed five sculptures of richard so if you do that over the course of two of the wheels no matter what you get you're guaranteed to unlock richard and then eventually you can invest in him later down the line if you want to if you missed your opportunity to get richard the first from the wheel or if you started your account in an older kingdom that already had the wheel pass do not worry you can still get richard the first from another event called card king it comes around periodically and you can get some of the older wheel commanders on that or during that event um it's a little bit less frequent than the wheels and it's just to me it's not an event that i like as much as the wheel of fortune so if you have the opportunity definitely try to summon him from the wheel after that just use your universals if you have them and if you want to this is a commander that you can definitely use at 5511 and we're going to get into that in a little bit but first let's talk about his skills right because richard the first skills are where he shines this is the reason why people use richard so much even in the late game season 4 kvk you still see a bunch of richard in the open field and it's for good reason his first skill is called soul of the crusaders it's an active skill with a rage requirement of 1000 it heals some of the slightly wounded units with a healing factor of 1400 in richard's army he adds a debuff to a maximum of five targets in a fan-shaped area and that debuff will reduce damage dealt by 30 percent and march speed by 15 percent for two seconds so this active skill is absolutely something that you want to take to five before you get your richard past level nine or past level 10 before you put that second star on him you want this skill to be five because this healing factor is incredibly powerful it's super good he also has a nice little debuff for two seconds that's an aoe so super super nice there the march speed reduction is 
not that exciting because infantry are, are really slow so it doesn't really matter if they're slowed down by 15 percent if it's a minamoto tsao tsao they're still probably going to get away but regardless this skill is insanely good for healing your army and keeping you sustained in the open field richard's second skill is called chivalry it's a passive that increases troop damage reduction by 15 percent and increases counterattack damage by 10 percent so this adds a lot more tank to your richard army so essentially the first skill is healing your troops that get hurt and applying a debuff to the enemy the second skill is reducing your damage that you're taking while dealing a little bit more counterattack damage in return so if you get swarmed and things like that you're dealing extra damage as well this is another skill that i would not skip if you're going to level richard up right now i would get him to five five before you move him any farther along the line his third skill is called the Lionheart, and it says increases the attack of infantry units by 15% and defense of infantry units by 15%. So this is 30% of infantry stats. Super, super great. You're going to be using him with a full infantry army anyway. So an extra 30% stats is awesome. I personally brought him to 5551 before I leveled him up. If you're going to expertise him anyway, I think that's probably the best way to do it in my opinion, because I just want those infantry to have the most amount of stats possible when I send them out in the battlefield. So the sooner Richard can do that for me, the better in my opinion, but it's up to you guys. If you are going to get Richard to 5511 and then focus on a different legendary after that, then of course, bring him to 5511, he'll still be decent. But if you're focusing on, if you're going to expertise him right now, he's the one you're currently focusing on. I would recommend bringing him to 5551, but that's again, totally up to you. His fourth skill is called Battle Hardened, and it says increases healing effects received by troops by 30% and reduces watchtower damage taken by troops by 30%. The watchtower effect here is kind of pointless. Uh, watchtowers aren't that powerful anyway, so it's whatever. Plus, you're not going to probably rally a city with Richard the First. I just don't think that's a great idea. Um, but the healing effect enhancement has incredible synergy with his first skill. Not only is this a powerful heal, but now it's buffed by 30%. Absolutely incredible. Now, his expertise is Tyrannical Lion. It says reduces all damage taken by 5% increases damage dealt to cavalry units by infantry units by two percent and in addition every 10 seconds decreases target march speed by 50 percent for five seconds so what we see here is a little bit more tankiness a little bit of tiny extra damage to to, to cavalry um, not that much almost negligible and in addition you get a really significant march speed debuff which is great normally we see this very small two second 15 percent debuff the expertise really bogs down that enemy and this is a much more substantial march speed reduction which is nice again i don't know Cao Cao probably still way too fast for you but but regardless that's it's a nice little added bonus now the first thing that you should notice about richard is that all four of these skills including the expertise are incredibly good in the open field and in fact all of them work in the open field if you're open field fighting all four skills are relevant this is not something that you can say for a lot of legendary commanders if you look at ethel fled her third skill is for barbs you look at Cao Cao, his second skills for barbs you look at minamoto third skills for barbs even if you go to somebody like i don't know um saladin his fourth skill is for rallying cities which you're not gonna probably do that often if you're fighting in the open field right it doesn't this what i'm saying is this has no effect in the open field whereas if you look at um richard the first and, and i'm not saying you shouldn't rally with saladin he's good for rallying but i'm saying in the open field that effect doesn't work whereas for richard all of his skills always work in the open field so you don't have any dead weight in the skill department which is part of what makes him so exceptionally good in the open field again you're getting value from all of these skills in the open field which is where richard shines with that being said let's look at the talent builds for richard the first this is the current talent build that i have for richard and full disclosure um i put this talent build on richard a very long time ago he's been expertise he's been level 60 for a very long time on my account so i don't remember exactly where i got this talent build i think i either got it from an alliance member or from maybe chiskel or some other content creator on uh, for rise of kingdoms on youtube right so i'm not taking credit for this build but 
this build uh, it is again i put this on him a very long time ago so there may be better builds out there but this build is specifically for being as tanky as possible right it's kind of a trading off damage for tank and why do i say that well if we wanted more damage we would probably go up to elite soldiers here in the infantry tree we certainly would probably want undying fury so that way whoever our secondary is gets a little bit of extra rage for their active skill if they have a, a skill damage that would be nice um but instead of doing that i made my way down here to desperate elegy now the reason for this is because he gets really exceptional rage regeneration um when he's below 30 percent strength for this talent we're gonna talk about why this is good in just a second but remember that as he gets to 30 percent he starts generating a decent amount of rage and that is one thing that is notably missing from richard right he has no skill damage and he has no rage regeneration all he does is he deals normal attack damage counter attack damage and he's just a massive healing tank right that's what he does if you want to deal more damage with richard you're gonna to have to pair him with somebody that deals more damage but what he does specifically is tank damage really really well and this helps you even at lower troop counts right because as your troops get lower your damage going out is less and less and less so this will help you by helping you use his active skill more often which is going to heal you more and more and more which is awesome so we also grabbed testudo formation which says normal troop tax have a 10 percent chance to reduce all damage taken by 15 percent for the next one second i think this is good it's a nice little tanky talent there we also have medicinal supplies where every time richard uses a skill it heals a healing factor of 300 so richard heals you by 1400 plus his fourth skill buffs that by 30 percent and because he used his active skill medicinal supplies also heals you by 300 which is also buffed by 30 percent so super great synergy there this adds to the tankiness and the healing factor of richard which is amazing now we also made it down here to loose formation that reduces skill damage taken by nine percent that's insanely good for being a tank we also have a master armorer which i think is really really good as well because it increases your defense by i believe nine percent yeah nine percent at six stars really great skill there we got some rage regeneration not too much now in the infantry tree we made our way up to hold the line because this says when this army led by this commander contains only infantry units gives troops a 10 percent chance to reduce damage taken by 20 percent for the next two seconds after being attacked so again this is another really great tanky talent that you can put on richard and you have that chance of reducing damage taken by a significant portion now we can also take a look over here at strong of body this will increase your infantry health by six percent that's great call of the pack says when this army is reduced by 250 percent strength increases all defense by six percent now this gives you more synergy with the desperate elegy talent over here again as your richard gets attacked in the open field his health will go down he heals a lot but he eventually he will get weaker once you hit that 50 percent mark you're going to get a nice six percent defense buff which is great once you hit that 30 percent mark you're going to get that nice rage regeneration which is going to heal your troops a lot more and not only that but it's going to apply that two second debuff that he does in a fan shaped area for up to five targets um so as your Richard gets lower and lower, a lot of people are going to think, well, it's almost dead. It's almost dead. But really, uh, these talents actually do help him a decent amount once he gets low in the open field. And so if you're sending your Richard out into the open field knowing, hey, I'm going to use this tank until the army is done, then these talents are going to help you a ton. Of course, if you don't like when your army gets that low, then you might want to think of a different talent build because this does utilize that factor um, but i think of all commanders in the game richard is the one that i would let get that low just because i know that he's still effective at lower troop counts of course you always want to refresh your troops if you can but if you can't like in season four ruins um this is going to be uh, probably your best bet now one thing to know is that i do actually think that this last point that i put in fleet of foot probably shouldn't be there it should probably be in this one percent infantry defense or you could put it in the one percent or i'm sorry the three rage for undying fury those would probably be better options than going here for the march speed and you know even here that six percent march speed you could argue that that's not really going to move the needle for infantry very much and you may as well put those three points uh in undying fury or something like that you know one point here two points here whatever the case might be it's up to you you guys can change that again i made this a very long time ago when you know i didn't really realize what richard was going to be doing i just knew i wanted a tank build and this is what i got so keep that in mind if you're copying this these three points are uh questionable now 
you might also be thinking what about the garrison tree right you've spent all video talking about how tanky he is how much damage he can take how much healing he can do why would you not want richard on your wall and it's a very very uh simple reason and that is the the fact that healing isn't that great on your wall so here's exactly what happens when a commander is healing an enemy attacks you some of the troops that get hit will go slightly wounded and some of them will go severely wounded the severely wounded units are the ones that go to your hospital they're not the ones that get healed by this skill this skill heals these slightly wounded units when slightly wounded units get healed they turn back into troops that can fight again which if you're in the open field is great because now you have more troops to sustain the battle in the open field environment the problem is when you're on the wall if your richard is on your wall or in a flag or a fortress or anything like that the problem is when you're getting hit and you're getting some slightly wounded and some severely wounded and then you're healing the slightly wounded or at least a, a nice chunk of them back to troops that can fight once they go back to fight there's another chance that they will get put into severely wounded and some of them will go slightly wounded and they'll get healed again and then some of them go back into severely wounded and so what happens is as you're healing you're actually accumulating more severely wounded units than you normally would now the trade-off is that you have more troops on your wall or in your garrison to fight so what this means is if richard's on your wall you're actually going to deal more damage to the enemy rally at the cost of filling your hospital faster and that's a very dangerous trade-off and because of that you've seen a ton of people remove Richard from their wall and for good reason I think most players shouldn't have Richard on their wall only because of that fact if you get attacked when you're not paying attention when you're offline uh, there's a good chance that you will end up with way more dead units than you would have if you had put somebody else on the wall again strictly because you're going to heal your you're going to fill your hospital faster and then those slightly wounded units will go back to fighting and then go to deads right and so instead of going into slightly wounded they go just straight to deads some of them do at least there's it's a portion it's a fractional game i don't know these specifics because the damage formula is not a public piece of information that Lilith gives us but this healing factor is incredibly good in the open field but it's a double-edged sword when you're garrisoning your city or a flag or fort so keep that in mind if you're in the early game and you are online and you're paying attention having Richard on your wall could mean dealing more damage to the enemy rally and also tanking very well however again you have to make sure that you are not filling your hospital too fast and you know again if you're offline if you're going offline you want to take Richard off the wall once you get into season two and season three of kvk you definitely should remove Richard at that point because you'll definitely have other options so I wanted to clear that up there's this misconception that Richard is terrible on your wall that's actually not the case he's a very tanky commander who deals great damage on your wall uh, because he keeps bringing troops back to fight but the negatives in this instance and in most instances will outweigh those positives because you may get way more deads and a way uh, your hospital will be filled way faster, which is a very expensive thing to heal, right? It's expensive to heal a, a ton of troops. So for that reason, I don't have any garrison talents on Richard and I don't think that you should have them either because again, he's probably not your best choice for putting on the wall. Personally, I have Martel and Sun Tzu that's what's on my wall even though I have an expertise to Richard with that being said let's talk about commanders that you can pair with Richard the first now again I mentioned this at the beginning of the video but the reason that Richard is so good is because he's incredibly good at the one thing that he does which is add healing and tankiness to your army so that means that you know since he does that one job so well he works in a ton of different army compositions depending on what exactly you need and for that reason I'm going to be recommending a ton of different commanders that you could possibly use with Richard with hopes that you will have access to some or most of those options again this is very subjective it depends on what commanders you have what level of spender you are in the game like how many legendaries do you have it depends on what are you doing are you in kvk1 or kvk4 it makes a difference and so we're going to talk about a lot of different commanders that i think all have a place with richard in an army depending on your scenario so again 
uh there's not one clean cut answer and that and that's what actually makes richard so good right that may sound like a cop-out answer or that may sound like it's you know like it's it's cheesy or or whatever but the, the 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 reality is that the reason he's so good is because he's good with so many commanders so with that being said let's jump into it the first obvious choice is charles martel they're both early game commanders martel comes from the gold keys if you get you know uh, richard to 5511 and you get charles martel to 5511 you've got an exceptionally good commander pairing for not being expertise right i think that this is probably better than your average uh expertise epic army that you could have uh, because you do get the 30 percent of stats from martel plus the five percent of stats that you get from this one plus you get the tankiness of healing plus you get charles martel's um shield which is awesome and you increase your damage by 30 percent for four seconds so martel is incredibly good synergy with uh richard i think this is a great combo i use this combo in the open field a ton um it's just it's a really great pair i love this combo i definitely recommend it we can also talk about sun tzu uh sun tzu is really he's a great infantry commander obviously but if you put him secondary to richard what's going to happen is a lot of times players don't target richard in the open field and the reason is because richard is just a damage absorbing tank you don't get that much value out of attacking a richard especially because infantry counters cavalry and you see a lot of cavalry in the open field right and so a lot of times you're not going to get good trades against a richard in the open field and so usually players will focus on the minamotos the genghis khans the ethelfleds those are the guys that really get targeted in the open field and richard kind of gets left alone and with that knowledge having sun tzu as a secondary is a great option because he does the aoe in the open field so a term that a lot of players use in the open field especially in kvk is called a murder ball and what that is is when you see a massive amount of enemy armies coming at you in a small tight formation um it's usually a huge cluster lack of organization chaos there's usually lag involved um but a murder ball is is something that you know if you see that a richard sun tzu would be a decent option to counter it because again they're probably not going to be targeting your richard but sun tzu is going to be hitting five of those targets uh, five of those targets for a decent amount of damage factor and regenerating a bunch of rage every single time he does that and remember richard we talked about he doesn't have an inherent rage engine and so this deals damage to a ton of targets in the open field it doesn't usually get targeted first which is great a lot of times sun tzu gets targeted because he's so powerful but behind a richard he may not be um and so you get the tankiness of richard you get the uh the intimidation factor of richard i guess you could say which you know people just don't want to hit him because it's not really worth it you might as well hit him in a moto but you get the benefits of sun tzu's uh aoe and his rage regeneration and he's got a little bit of tank here as well plus buffing your infantry health which is good now that same logic can be applied to isong ye again i made a video comparing richard and isong ye but in reality you could actually use both both of these together you really can now the trade-off with Sun Tzu versus Esong is that Esong is going to be dealing more damage in the open field but Sun Tzu has a more reliable uh, amount of rage regeneration because the rage regeneration from Esong is a 10% chance for 100 whereas Sun Tzu's rage is guaranteed as long as he hits targets now again if it's a murder ball you're gonna get probably what 250 rage every single time this goes off so I think you have a more consistent stream of rage from Sun Tzu than Esong but Esong definitely will be be dealing more damage and it's a circular area if he's expertise which is just incredibly good so for the same reasons as sun tzu you can pair isong with richard as well even though he's an archer commander it doesn't make that much of a difference he's really there for the incredible amounts of aoe skill damage and the little bit of rage regeneration that you get from that second skill now if it's early game kvk1 you can consider pairing richard with scipio again this is something that is really for new players for players that are in kvk1 and early game uh scipio is just a generic tank and so pairing him with richard definitely has synergy he also brings 10 percent more troops in this case it would be infantry and i think that that has some nice synergy early on but again later down the line you're going to want to replace that with somebody else but it's totally something that you could do an even better pairing would actually be Joan of Arc and you actually see this a ton in Sunset Canyon you see a Richard primary Joan of Arc secondary and the reason for that is because the same reason as Esong the same reason as Sun Tzu Richard tends to not be hit in the open field and Joan of Arc 
does not want to be hit she wants to be left alone she wants her buffs to pop off over and over and over again and she wants to be a team player supporting everybody in the open field and this applies not only in sunset canyon but it also applies in the open field as well you can bring joan of arc with your richard and it will be less like likely to be targeted than if you brought joan of arc with somebody else that is a bit more squishy like uh ethel fled or something like that right if they see an ethel fled joan you're gonna get swarmed immediately because you're a huge threat to the outcome of that of that war as a whole not just that battle but you know, it's not like it's not like ethel fled joan is dealing a ton of damage right it's just that you're influencing a lot of battles around them and so by putting richard in front of joan of arc you're getting the sustain of richard right and so that means that this this uh expertise first skill is going to pop off uh, a lot of times in the duration of her staying alive for a very long amount of time and she's regenerating some rage she's healing a little bit as well which is nice and she also has some normal attack damage built in which is cool so a richard joan of arc pairing is in an, a really really great pairing that you could have and it can again be full infantry and joan of arc is cool with that another pairing that you could do and this is mainly for free to play or low spenders or if you again if you're early game kvk one or two uh ulji mundok is a great pairing for richard and i know i just made a video talking about ulji and some things that i would love to see improved with ulji mundok um however he does have a nice little debuff here he also has 30 percent of infantry stats which of all the other recommendations that we made only martel will give you that amount um obviously there are other legendaries that could do similar things of course but in the epic tier this is the only infantry commander that can give you 30 percent of infantry stats which is definitely noteworthy considering how tanky richard already is plus if your richard does get swarmed which you know spoiler alert that's really the only way to take down a richard is by just ganging up on him and, and just you know having a ton of people attack him all at once um if he does get swarmed Olgi is actually totally okay with that because it doubles your damage for a turn and this will pop off way more often when he gets swarmed and again in my previous video talking about Olgi, i mentioned how this skill is not that great for free-to-play players because you typically as a free-to-play don't want to get swarmed however if you do have a richard as a primary um it may be a decent option you could do that right you may even want Olgi as primary because he has the attack tree over the defense tree which will which will deal more damage but will actually uh be less tanky it's up to you i would probably do richard primary just to avoid getting swarmed as free to play but you know again it, it's up to your scenario in terms of legendary pairings that i don't have you could do julius caesar for early game of course you know he doesn't care about what troop type he's a little bit tanky as well he brings more troops just like scipio um <clears throat> i think that this pairing is less likely than some of the other ones because it's unlikely that you'll have a very powerful julius caesar in the time frame where it would be appropriate unless you're a heavy spender and if you are you probably have martel already so julius caesar it, it's unlikely that you would use him but you could it's just you probably won't same thing with frederick he really shines when he's expertise and unfortunately um it's unlikely that you will have him expertise in, in in a window where you don't have martel at a reasonable level you know so again not something that i would super recommend it's possible but it's just not something that's very likely alexander the great is arguably one of the best pairs if not the best pair for richard the first and the reason for that is because he makes up for some of the things that richard doesn't do well so he brings a shield like martel which it's not as good but it's close actually is it oh it actually is it's actually as good i didn't even realize that i thought it was slightly worse i thought martel's was 1400 but anyway alexander gives you a 1200 uh shield damage factor shield which is really really good <clears throat> he also supports your allies by giving them a small shield this is a really great skill uh, for Richard because it actually makes up for some of the damage factor that Richard doesn't do. Plus, he gives you a ton of infantry attack and march speed on the op uh, out in the open field. And you also get a ton of attack and defense buffs from whether or not the shield is up or not. Because of that, an Alexander primary Richard secondary would be an insanely good combination because Alexander does more damage. Richard keeps Alexander alive. The shield with Alex kind of has synergy with the tankiness of Richard as well. These commanders are really a match made in heaven. They're an insanely good commander pairing. Um, you know, I just can't say more about this commander pairing. Like, honestly, I think, you know, maybe, maybe Martell is slightly more tanky. Maybe. I mean, now that I think about it, probably not actually. 
I mean, I, I, I just, I don't think so. He may, he may be, I don't know. Martel might be slightly more tanky than Alexander the Great as a secondary to Richard, but Alex primary Richard secondary is definitely a best of both worlds where you're dealing more damage and you're, and you're still pretty tanky. Um, I mean, still very tanky. Honestly, let's be honest. Like, uh, let's be real. You're still very tanky with an Alex Richard. So that's an, an incredibly good pair. Alex, I would definitely want five, five, one, one, at least if not better. And then at that point we get into some of the more late game commanders. You could pair them with Guan Yu because Guan Yu is great in the open field, but what he lacks is tankiness. And so Richard brings that along. Guan Yu is loving infantry and also dealing some AOE, which is cool. You could pair him with Leonidas if you wanted to as well, I suppose. But again, I really think that uh, most of you watching will want to strive for an Alexander the Great pairing or a, um, a Charles Martel pairing. Uh, other epics can fill in until you get those commanders uh, up to snuff, really. With that being said, let's talk about equipment. This is the last part of the video. We want to talk about equipment because it is important. Now, remember, you're going to focus on equipment much later in the game, right? You don't want to focus. I mean, you want to work on equipment the whole time, of course, but um, there's so much to do in the early game, getting all your buildings to 25, getting your research to 25, getting those T5 troops, focusing on getting commanders, summoning commanders, doing all the events and everything that, you know, equipment really is something that you should keep in mind the entire time but you're really going to focus on it later in the game when your vip level is higher and you don't have as much other things to focus on you know this is when you're going to shine but right now this is a work in progress obviously these boots are not what you would put on a richard clearly there's no reason to put these boots on there i just had them left over i need to work on upgrading this however everything else has synergy here these two grays are not exceptionally good but they do give you a nice little chunk of infantry stats we got defense and we got a four percent attack right there we also have commanders heavy armor which will give me four percent infantry attack which is also great and then we have greaves of the exile which gives you some nice defense and stuff of the lost which also gives you some nice defense so that's the equipment that i have on him obviously the more infantry stats on your equipment the better just period right He's going to be a full infantry commander if he's leading the if he's leading your army the most amount of infantry stats possible is what you want on this commander with that being said guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video i really really do appreciate you guys make sure to drop a thumbs up on the video it only takes a fraction of a second and it does help my channel out a ton subscribe if you're new around here i know a lot of you guys aren't so make sure you click the subscription button and then click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video in the description you will find all my social media as well as my discord link where you can come and connect with me ask me questions about the game and it will also tell you whenever i go live on twitch twitch link is in the description make sure you drop a follow over there i typically stream a couple times every week with rise of kingdoms and you can pop in and ask me questions there as well finally if you want to play rise of kingdoms on your computer there's a link to blue stacks to download rise of kingdoms in the description below that's how i mostly play this game and i really do love the experience so make sure to give it a try i think it's a really cool way to play on your computer don't forget to follow turtle shell pin pins another shout out to him links will be in the description comment down below if you have any other questions about richard the first or questions about anything about rise of kingdoms in general commander pairings or anything like that make sure you recommend me different merch ideas or different logo ideas that i can make with that uh, awesome artwork that i showed you at the beginning of the video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni i will talk to you guys again soon peace